to ask you about uh, Anthony Origin. Just what have you kind of uh, made of his progress? And just even from like where he was a year ago and now, is, have you noticed that much improvement from him? Yeah, um, I think it's been, uh, you know, probably as much improvement as you can have in a player. Um, I think you saw it in flashes last year of what he, he could potentially be, but I think he just put the work in in the off season to train his body and train his mind to be ready to go for this moment. And I think he's done an incredible job of not only putting in the work, but allowing it to translate into his game. He's, he's just stacked multiple really good practices and uh, it's really exciting to see him put it together in a game. Um, and I think if he can just continue to do that, continue to work hard at practice and, and continue to get better, uh, continue to have games like that, uh, it, the sky's the limit for him. What would you like about the defense this game? Um, I think we're getting, getting closer to where we need to be uh, for the season. For, for us, our, our mindset is it's not what we play, but how we play. Um, and we have to be faster than our opponents. We have to be more violent than our opponents. Uh, we have to be mentally sharper than our opponents. Um, our anticipation has to be, you know, through the roof. And I think we're getting closer to that. So we just got to keep working. And Mario, this whole thought process about the linebackers being like the coffee, is that something you came up with or Coach just came up with? It? Who said that? Who said that? Where that come from? Where you heard that? Who said it? Well, you heard it. A lot, a lot of linebacks have said it, and I don't know who talked about it. You heard from Pete, you heard from Anthony and Jalen. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Also and and we, 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 <laughs> so what's kind of this? Yeah, man, I mean, you know, somebody got to be the coffee in the building. Um, and that's what, that's, that's, I mean, we take pride in just having energy. Um, you know, one of our mantras on defense is having 11 hats to the football. Um, you know, and, and creating takeaways. And takeaways come from population around the ball. And so you just have to have an enthusiasm and excitement for what you're doing. Um, and we take a lot of pride in that. So if the energy is ever off at practice, you know, you, we, we, we take that personally because that's on us. And I think it's, it's, it's a collective in, in, in holding the team and you just have to know what part of the rope that you're holding. And so we take a lot of pride in uh, the energy, the energy that's in the building and, and really the physicality and the way that we practice. And so uh, we just believe in setting the tone. Um, and I think it has to come from somewhere. And uh, I think it's, it, it, it rightly suits us in the position that we play. Are you a Are you coffee drinker? Are you a coffee drinker? Uh, I don't know if I want to discuss that publicly. <laughs> and the guys we have asked who have said that, uh, it doesn't seem like any of them are. Can Defense, you still have coffee if none of the linebackers actually? Uh, you know, I just say if I take my coffee, I take it black. And uh, I'm a fan of Starbucks. <laughs> hey, what is uh, what is the kind of you know, pressure of Chase Young? What is he kind of just brought to this defense? Oh man, I think that's probably um, one of the ads of the year. And I think that's probably across the league. And um, I mean, I think it was a huge signing, but I think it's probably. One of those underrated under underrated signings um, that's gonna that's gonna show itself uh, years down the line, and uh, especially this year, um, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if he puts himself in the defensive player of the year category uh, this year. I mean, just the way that he he is a problem. I think he's he's unblockable. Uh, he works hard. Um, he's already established himself himself as a leader on this team, and, and guys respond to him. Um, I think he brings the intensity every single day, um, and I'm really excited to see, uh, you know, what type of year he has. Uh, we need him to be big for us. Was he even better than you thought he was going to be? Like once he got here, like from the time you signed him to what you were saying. I mean, um, it, you really can't be shocked when a, a top draft pick, you know, uh, you know, does spectacular things. Um, and and I've so I've I've admired his game from a distance, but you know seeing him seeing him uh, in person. First of all, he's an enormous human being, uh, but just the way that he moves and the way that he plays with his hands um, and his IQ uh, is is impressive to see. I think what I've been impressed with the most is the way that he shows up every day um, and the way that he he hunts he hunts the ball. I mean, I think the way that we practice isn't for everybody. 
And I think that sometimes when guys come to a Saints practice, as far as on the defensive side, it's it's a challenge to get used to. But he has meshed in well. Um, you know, I think he has he, he plays with tenacious energy and effort every single play, um, and it's gonna pay off. We need we need it. Demario, when you see the, the lineup of having Cam inside with Brian and then having Chase on the outside alongside uh, uh, Granderson, those four out there all at one time, what, what do you think about that that front four potential? Man, you need to ask a lot of quarterbacks that, because <laughs> I mean I don't know what it would take to play quarterback in this league, but. If I'm if if I'm getting under the center and I see Cam Jordan, Cam Jordan and Brian uh, Brzee on the inside, and I look out and, and Grando and Chase Young on the outside, I can't be excited to snap the ball unless I'm handing it off. And uh, so, I mean, good luck. <laughs> and I think they it's it's the way that I get to see them practicing every day. It's not that they're counting on their name or what they've done before to, to, to speak for them. They putting the work in, in, in the run, in the pass game. And so um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited as anybody to play, play behind the line like that. But I mean, it's not just, it's not just you know, those guys. Um, you know, we got guys like, you know, Bink and Colin Sanders and, uh, you know, Nate Shepard, who phenomenal on the inside for us as well. And um, so, it's, it's, it's going to be exciting. Christian Boyd, I think, is going to have a good year. I think we got some guys that are going to make some plays up there. But as far as getting out to the passer, I think we got guys that, that can get with the best of them. And so I'm excited. Mark, you were talking, uh, uh, you and Cam and Tyron were talking a lot at the beginning of training game about wanting to set the tone, appreciating how much time, you know, how precious time is and all that. How is that sustained over sort of the dog days? Of, you know, four weeks of, of camp and, and that energy, you know, urgency you guys are trying. Yeah, camp is tough, um, but it's supposed to be. You know, it's just part of the process. Um, I do think, you know, you know, coming out of camp, guys are getting more ready to start getting getting tired of hitting each other and, and, and ready to, you know, play in real games that, that mean something. But we're still in the process. You know, we got another preseason game, and all our minds just got to be focused on Tennessee. and. Then we'll turn the page and get ready for the real season. But so it's it's, it's a process, and and you can't skip a part in the process. You can't skip a day. You just gotta work. The next week is is a tough time in the NFL for a lot of young guys. Having a presence and being a leader on this team, how have you kind of addressed that? Have you addressed that in the locker room with these younger guys? Uh, you know, different conversations need to be had with different guys at different points in time. And I think that's just part of part of being you know a leader is. Uh, to be aware, but I think we got phenomenal leadership at each position. So a bulk of my time is just spent in the linebacker room. Um, I think Tyron does a phenomenal job, you know, in the secondary. Uh, I think, you know, Lat and Adebo do a great job, you know, speaking with the corners and, and, and conversation that a lot of people won't have. Cam does a great job with the defensive line. Uh, Eric McCoy does a great job with the O-line. Um, you know, so I think, you know, it's leaders all throughout the building who who are able to speak life into to their groups. So it's uh, time for one more. It's random, but do you ever go back and look at like your uh, pre-draft scouting reports or anything like that? Like, yeah. Uh, do, do, do you do it often, or is it? Um, I gotta say it on my phone. <laughs> do you? Yeah. Let me see if I can pull it up. I'm gonna read it to you. It's funny that you should ask me that. Let me see if I can find it in here. How much time I got? Oh, we'll wait. Oh, yeah, we'll wait. Here we go. Demario Davis has the size of an NFL linebacker at 6'2", 235 pounds, and possesses the skill set to compete at the next level. Davis was a tackling machine for Arkansas State. Playing in the, in the smaller Sunbelt Conference, Davis was able to accrue many accolades. I'm going to get past that. Then he says, he has great lateral quickness and speed. Combine those attributes with his never-ending motor on the field, and he could be a great asset, especially in a 4-3 defensive scheme. They called that right because I was in a 3-4 to start, and now I'm in a 3-4-3. Three, three. Um, let me go to the weaknesses. I'm going to talk about the strengths. Davis needs to gather better when running down plays from inside out. He is so fast that he can overrun guys at, 
at times and fly off of them as his momentum takes him outside on a tackle. Against one-cut runners at the NFL level, he could have a tough time gathering to make a secure tackle on the run. His athletic ability really doesn't translate to pass defense, where he can look awkward and out of place at times when playing within a zone. He needs to learn to better diagnose plays and, and could struggle against faster offenses. And it goes on and on. So, so you say anything about you sacking the quarterback? It seems like uh, that. It probably was in there somewhere on the, on, on, on the strength side, but I really just focused on the weaknesses. Um, is that from like a reporter or like NFL Network? This, is, was, this was on a Bleacher Report. And it was uh, the Mario Davis to Jets video highlights, scouting report, and analysis. I just keep that saved there. Never forget where you came from. <laughs> hey, you just gotta ask you, why, why do you keep it? Just motivation? Or? Yeah, because a lot of those things that they called out as weaknesses, I've turned to strengths. And that's one of the things that I realize in life is you have to be humble enough to admit your weaknesses or hear your weaknesses from somebody else and to be able to make those corrections. And so even if I thought that they were wrong, it's something that somebody noticed and I could work on. And what I did was I worked on those. And now I see those things as strengths. And so I just think it's, 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 it's a lot of importance in not forgetting the process that got you to where you are today. And so it just reminds me that even today I have things that I could be better at. And let me identify those things and be humble enough if a coach points them out to me, if my wife points them out to me, if a friend points them out to me, or a little kid on the street points them out to me. It's something that I can work on to be better. And if I'm humble enough to hear it, then I can make the changes. How often do you look at that scouting report? Uh, it's right there on my phone. Every time I pass by it, you know, or every so often, I click on it and just reread it. Did you think some of those things were wrong, or, or did you actually just take it as constructive criticism? Uh, I think maybe when I was a rookie and it came out, I probably didn't know what I was reading. You know, so I didn't know how to analyze it properly. So what they were saying. I probably, probably felt like, man, the plays I made in college, I can make in the pros, which a lot of guys do. Um, I think it was around my fourth or fifth year when I started to realize some of the flaws that I had in my game, they aligned with the report. And as I started to work on those things, because now it wasn't <laughs> a, a, a college scouting report, it was actual game reports, you know, and it was I'm missing tackles because I'm overrunning them. You know, I'm looking lost in zone. And it was like, OK, I got to work on this. And so I didn't find this report till years later after I had after I had fixed those things. And it was like, oh, that was spot on with some of the weaknesses that I had. <laughs> <laughs> so whoever this guy was that wrote this report, like, oh, hey, we need you to come work over here. because <laughs> <laughs> You called it right, dog. You called it right. <laughs> All right, man, appreciate y'all. Blessing.